Bengaluru, the capital of Karnataka, which was once a small town, has now grown into an important urban center, recognized as the Silicon Valley of India and the Garden City of India. Bengaluru city has a population of more than 80 lakhs and a metropolitan population of more than 1.5 crore, making it the third most populous city and the fourth most populous urban agglomeration. Bengaluru is home to various information technology and biotechnology industries, large public sector undertakings like Bharat Electronics Limited, Hindustan Aeronautics Limited and Bharat Earth Movers Limited, and various educational institutions like the Indian Institute of Science, Indian Institute of Management, International Institute of Information Technology and many others. All of this has led to massive immigration and rapid growth of the city. Bengaluru was initially just a town with a population of 16.7 lakh people in 1971. Thereafter, the growth rate increased and in 1981, the population of Bengaluru became 29.2 lakhs, a 75% growth in population when compared to 1971. In the 1981-1991 decade, 41% growth occurred pushing the population to 41.3 lakhs and in the 1991-2001 decade, 37% growth occurred, pushing the population to 56.7 lakh. The increase in population subsequently led to an increase in the number of vehicles on the roads. The number of registered vehicles in the city crossed 15 lakh vehicles by 2001, which was continuously growing at a growth rate of 10% per annum. The only modes of public transport available at that time were buses. BMTC operated a fleet of 2,450 buses. Buses carried around 24 lakh passengers per day, which is 45% of the total share. The railway network hardly carried 1% of the commuters due to non-availability of adequate number of services. Taxis and autos were the only other options for commuters. These factors mentioned led to traffic congestion on roads, heavy noise pollution, high parking demand, and slow average speed of vehicles at just 10 to 12 km per hour and high air pollution levels. A mass rapid transit system was the need of the hour. A number of studies were done for providing an efficient public transport system for Bengaluru. A study was carried out all the way back in 1963 by the Central Road Research Institute. However, this study generally concentrated on the road network and traffic management system. Later on, in 1982, a study group nominated by the government of Karnataka gave a report, which even though suggested a metro system, but majorly concentrated on road improvements. In 1983, in the Metropolitan Transport Project, a team of Southern Railway prepared a feasibility report for introducing suburban services on existing corridors, a ring railway, and a rapid rail transit system on two corridors. This project was estimated to cost Rs. 650 crore at 1983 prices but this report was not followed up. In 1988, for the Bangalore Urban Transport Project, it was carried out by the Rail India Technical and Economic Service or RITES. The report recommended to provide suburban services on the existing rail network to decongest the roads. The first mass rapid transit system was recommended in January 1993 by an official committee nominated by the state government. This report again recommended the same metro project put forward by the Southern Railways in 1983. Work was to be carried out in two phases. Phase 1 involved the construction of a mass rapid transit system from Rajaji Nagar to Jayanagar for a length of 12.9 km and construction of a suburban corridor on the existing rail network. Phase 2 involved the construction of an MRTS from Hudson Circle to Krishna Rajapura for a length of 11.2 km and construction of a circular railway for 57.9 km. In 1994, the state government incorporated a company under the name Bangalore Mass Rapid Transit Limited or BMRTL to implement the mass rapid transit system. BMRTL in turn asked IL and FS to carry out a feasibility study for a rapid transit system in Bengaluru on a public-private partnership basis. The study suggested a light rail transit or LRT system on the following six routes. 
The system would have a capacity of 24,850 peak hour peak direction traffic. It would have special rolling stock with 750 volt DC traction system. The total cost of the project at 1994 prices was 2,025 crore rupees, excluding land prices, and up to 2030. The internal rate of return was projected as 12.9 percent. However, despite fixing up a private partner for implementing this project, the project couldn't take off for various reasons. During August to October 2002, the government of Karnataka started discussions with the Delhi Metro Rail Corporation or DMRC for preparing a detailed project report for a metro system in Bengaluru. The work started in October 2002, and DMRC submitted the DPR for Phase One. of namma metro in may 2003 the bmrtl ceased to exist and was replaced by the bangalore metro rail corporation limited or bmrcl now let us talk about phase 1 of namma metro The Delhi Metro Rail Corporation or DMRC submitted the detailed project report of phase 1 of Namma Metro in May 2003. This project received approval from the Union Cabinet in April 2006. The DPR was for a 33 km metro system with 31 stations in two metro corridors. The east west corridor which is now the purple line would run from Mysore road in the west to Bayyapanna Halli in the east. and was 18.1 km long with 17 stations the north south corridor which is now the green line would run from yashwantpur in the north to jayanagar in the south and was 14.9 km long with 14 stations in the 18.1 km long purple line 14.35 km is elevated 3.4 km is underground and the remaining 0.35 km is at grade or at surface level of the 17 stations 11 are elevated Five are underground and one is on surface level. In the 14.9 km long green line, 11.3 km are elevated, 3.3 km are underground, and the remaining 0.3 km is at grade or at surface level. Of the 14 stations, 11 are elevated, three are underground, and none are on surface level. The foundation stone for the construction of Namma Metro's Phase One was laid on June 24, 2006, by the then Prime Minister Dr. Manmohan Singh. Civil construction on the Bayya Panna Halli to MG Road section commenced on April 15, 2007. The DPR for the northern extension of the Green Line to Nagsandra, of length 7.3 kilometers with six stations, was submitted in October 2007. and the dpr for the southern extension of the green line till yella chinna halli of length 3.5 kilometers with four stations was submitted in june 2008 with these extensions the total length of phase 1 became 42.3 kilometers the objective of these extensions was to connect the northern and southern ends of outring road as well as provide connectivity to industrial areas like pinya the government of karnataka approved these extensions in october 2008 Namma Metro has divided its network into different reaches. Reach 1 of the purple line from Mahatma Gandhi Road to Bayya Panna Halli of length 6.7 kilometers and with six stations was thrown open to the public on 20th October 2011. This stretch was constructed by Nava Yuga Engineering Company Limited. There was an overwhelming response by the public at the commencement of operations. By the fourth day, more than 2 lakh passengers had already commuted on the stretch. reach 3 of green line from sampigero to yashwantpur and reach 3a from yashwantpur to pinya industry have a combined length of 9.9 kilometers and consist of 10 stations these stretches were opened to public on 1st march 2014 in the first month of operations approximately 24000 people used the line daily then the reach 3b of the green line from pinya industry to nagsandra Metro station of length 2.5 kilometers and with three stations was opened to the public on 1st May 2015. Back to the purple line, the reach 2 of purple line from Mysore Road to Magdi Road of length 6.4 kilometers and with six stations was constructed by Simplex Infrastructures Limited. 
This section was open to the public on 16th November 2015. Since this section does not have a depot, BMRCL had to rush track work in the underground section between Magdi Road and MG Road. Metro trains in the mornings would make their way to Magdi Road from the Bayyapannarli depot through the tunnel and would make their way back in the nights for rest and maintenance. Now only the underground sections were left for opening. Both purple and green lines have underground sections in the city center and they intersect each other at the Nade Prabhu Kempe Gowda metro station Majestic. For the construction of the purple lines underground section bids were invited in February 2008 and financial bids were opened in July 2009. The joint venture of the Continental Engineering Corporation or CEC Soma Engineering and CEC is Indian arm CEC International Corporation India or CICI the most as the lowest bidder for the construction of the purple lines underground section and were awarded this contract in March 2010 the CEC Soma CICI joint venture carried out tunneling works using three tunnel boring machines or TBMs and a new Australian tunneling method or NATM machine all stations were built using the standard cut and cover method Tunnel boring machine Helen was commissioned from the Majestic Metro Station to, to construct the tunnel till Cavern Park via Central College and Vidhan Sauda. It was then recommissioned from the Majestic Metro Station to construct the tunnels to and from KSR Railway Station. TBM Margarita tunnel parallel to TBM Helen from Majestic to Central College to Vidhan Sauda to Cavern Park. Another TBM which was not assigned a name tunnel from the East Tram to Cavern Park and back to the East Tram. A new Australian tunneling method or NATM machine was used to construct the tunnels from West Tram to KSR railway station and back. Tunneling works on this stretch started on 20th May 2011. This section had 10 TBM breakthroughs. The 10th and final breakthrough on this section was achieved on 17th March 2014. Then on 11th November 2015, BMRCL began trial runs on the underground stretch. This section got clearance from the Commissioner for Metro Rail Safety on 8th April 2016 and this 5.12 km underground stretch with five stations between Magdi Road and MG Road officially known as UG1 was opened to the public on 30th April 2016 this made end to end travel possible from Mysore Road to Bayya Pannahalli without any breaks in the line With this the purple line was completed and end to end travel was possible from Bayyapadnalli to Mysuru road. The construction of green lines underground section was very challenging. It witnessed many delays during the tendering process itself even before groundwork started. Bids for the section were invited in February 2008. The scope originally included construction of the two ramps, the tunnel sections and three stations at KR Market, Chickpet and Majestic. But due to the exceptionally high bids received BMRCL re-invited separate bids in late 2009. In this case, Majestic Interchange Station's construction was made a separate package. The tunnel construction contract was awarded to the joint venture of Coastal Projects Limited and TTS in March 2011, whereas the construction of the Majestic Interchange Metro Station was awarded to the joint venture of Coastal Projects Limited and GYT in November 2011. The Coastal TTS joint venture used three tunnel boring machines or TBMs to construct the tunnels. TBM Kaveri tunnel from South Ram to Majestic via KR Market and Chickpea. TBM Krishna constructed the parallel tunnel from South Ram to Majestic via KR Market and Chickpea. While TBM Kaveri completed tunneling works quickly, TBM Krishna encountered both hard rock and extremely loose soil conditions. So the team had to apply brakes on their TBM. and continue tunneling cautiously at an extremely slow pace thus tbm krishna took 22 months to tunnel between kr market and chickpet for a length of 432 meters only causing delays now let us understand the construction of the northern section between majestic and north ramp tbm godavari was commissioned from the north ramp to construct the upline tunnel to majestic While the original plan was that TBM Godavari would make a breakthrough at Majestic and then return back to the North Ramp, however, the TBM ran into difficult tunneling conditions. Let's understand in detail. TBM Godavari was commissioned from the North Ramp to construct a 973 meter upline tunnel to Majestic on 21st May 2013. Due to difficult tunneling conditions, 
PVM Godavari was progressing at an extremely slow pace. It advanced only 352 meters in 13 months. It finally gave up and broke down in June 2014, just south of the railway line. To keep Phase 1 project on track, BMRCL prior to this incident appointed Purple Lines contractor CEC Soma CICI joint venture to use TVM Margarita to construct the downline tunnel from Majestic to Sampige Road. Back to TBM Godavari, a new cutter head was ordered from Italy. The coastal DTS joint venture excavated a 60 feet deep shaft to reach Godavari and replaced the cutter head which got fixed onto it in July 2015. TBM Godavari restarted tunneling in September 2015 and made a breakthrough in Majestic in April 2016. TBM Godavari thus took as many as 35 months to complete tunneling on this stretch. Bengaluru's geology is of the kind that poses challenges in the construction of such metro projects. But after the final breakthrough of the last TBM in September 2016, BMRCL took just 9 months to complete all remaining tasks and open the metro for the public, which usually takes anywhere around 12 to 18 months. Trial runs began on the stretch in March 2017, CMRS inspections began in May 2017, and CMRS approval approved this line in June 2017. This 4km underground section between Sampige Road and National College, Reach 4 between National College and RV Road, and Reach 4A between RV Road and Yella Chenna Halli, with a combined length of 12km and 11 stations, opened for public on 18th June 2017. With this, Nama Metro's Phase 1 was completed. To summarize, Phase 1 is 42.3km long with 42 metro stations. Phase 1 of Nama Metro connects important areas like Magdi Road, Majestic, MG Road, Indranagar, Bahia Pannahalli, Manchankri, RV Road, Lalbagh, KR Market, Yashwanpur and Pinya. The initial cost estimate for Phase 1 when it was approved in 2006 was Rs 6,395 crore. After increase in length of metro from 33 km to 42.3 km, the cost increased to 8,158 crores. Delays caused further cost escalations. The cost escalated to 11,609 crore in 2011 and 13,845 crore in 2015. The final cost to build Phase 1 of Nama Metro with taxes was estimated at Rs 14,405.01 crore. Of the 13,845 crore, which is actual expenditure, 58.91% is given by the central and state governments that is 8155.54 crore rupees the remaining 41.09% has been secured through loans from different financial institutions that is rupees 5689.47 crores bmrcl secured loans from several agencies like 3000 crore rupees from the japan international cooperation agency or jica 600 crore rupees from the Housing and Urban Development Corporation Limited, 25 crore rupees from the Asian Development Bank, and around 2000 crore rupees from the French Development Agency. The state government appointed DMRC in January 2011 to prepare the detailed project report or DPR for Phase 2. The Karnataka government gave in principle approval to Phase 2 of Nama Metro in January 2012. The Union Cabinet approved the plans for Phase 2 in January 2014. Phase 2 of Nama Metro spans for a length of 72 km across the city. It involves expanding the two existing lines in all four directions and the construction of two new lines. These extensions are as follows. A 6.29 km southern extension of the Green Line from Yella Chennahalli to Silk Institute, formerly Anjanapura Township Metro Station, with 5 metro stations. And a 3.77 km northern extension of the Green Line from Nagasandra to Madavara, formerly BIEC Metro Station, with 3 stations. A 9.55 km western extension of the Purple Line from Mysuru Road to Challagatta with 7 metro stations and a 15.81 km eastern extension of the purple line from Bayapanhalli to Whitefield Kadugudi with 13 metro stations. All the mentioned extensions are completely elevated. Phase 2 also involves the construction of two new lines. 
First, a completely elevated yellow line from Rashtriya Vidyalaya Road or RV Road in the south to Bomma Sandra in the southeast for a length of 19.15 km with 16 stations. This line is also called Line 3. Second, Line 4 or the pink line from Kalina Agrahara in the south to Nagwara in the north. It is a 21.25 km long line with 18 stations. The pink line is majorly underground from Dairy Circle to Nagwara. To be precise, out of the 21.25 km, 13.92 km is underground from Dairy Circle to Nagwara, 6.98 km is elevated from Kalena Agrahara to Tavre Kere, and the remaining 0.48 km is at grade or at surface level. Of the 18 stations on the line, 12 stations are underground, 6 stations are elevated, and none of the stations are at grade. The Karnataka Industrial Area Development Board or KIADB is responsible for acquiring land for Phase 2. It was estimated that 102.02 hectares of land or 252 acres of land would be required for Phase 2. BMRCL spent 5000 crore rupees to acquire these lands. Construction work started on Reach 4B of the Green Line from Yella Chinnahalli to Silk Institute by Nagarjuna Construction Company or NCC in October 2016. Talking about the Purple Line's westward extension, construction work for Reach 2A from Mysore Road to Patangere was awarded to Infrastructure Leasing and Financial Services and construction work for Reach 2B from Patangere to Chalagatta was awarded to Soma Enterprise Limited. Work on these stretches was also started in October 2016. Reach 3C from Nag Sandra to Matavara on the Green Line is being constructed by Simplex Infrastructures. Construction work on this stretch started in June 2017. The stretch has been delayed a lot for these reasons. Firstly, BMRCL struggled a lot in acquiring land from the Nandi Infrastructure Corridor Enterprise or NICE Limited for years, causing delays. Secondly, the contractor Simplex ran into financial difficulties, slowing things down on Reach 3C. Talking about the eastern extension of the Purple Line, Reach 1A of the Purple Line from Bayya Pannahalli to Sita Rampalya and Reach 1B from Sita Rampalya to Whitefield Kadugudi were awarded to ITD Cementation Limited. They started construction work on this stretch in February 2018. The first stretch of Phase 2 that opened for public was Reach 4B from Yella Chinnahalli to Silk Institute of length 6.3 km and with 5 stations on 15 January 2021. Purple lines Reach 2A and part of Reach 2B from Mysuru Road to Kengeri of length 7.5 km and 6 stations opened for public on 30th August 2021 and the Krishna Raja Pura to Whitefield Kadogodi stretch of the Purple Line part of reaches 1A and 1B for a length of 13.71 km and with 12 stations open for the public on 26th March 2023. This was isolated from the rest of the network. BMTC temporarily land feed the buses between Bahia Pannahalli and KR Pura metro stations to provide connectivity between this broken stretch. Finally, all the remaining stretches of the purple line, that is the 2.1 km stretch from Bahia Padnahalli to Krishna Rajapura and the 2.05 km stretch from Kengeri to Challagatta with two stations at Challagatta in the Kengeri Challagatta stretch and Benigannahalli in the Bahia Padnahalli to Krishna Rajapura stretch were opened for the public on 9th October 2023. With this, the purple line was entirely completed. This is the operational present network of Nama Metro that spans 73.81 km and has 65 stations with two lines. The purple line is 43.49 km long and has 37 metro stations, whereas the green line is 30.5 km long and has 29 stations. Now in this video from here onwards, we'll talk about the under construction network of Nama Metro. In the year 2024-25 itself, we are expected to see many additions to the Nama Metro network. Reach 3C from Nag Sandra to Madavara of length 3.77 km and with 3 stations is expected to open in July 2024. With the opening of the stretch, the green line will also be completed. 
In an article of the Hindu dated 14th May 2024, it is said that currently track works have been finished on the Nagsandra Madhavara metro stretch and some minor station and system works are still pending. Now let us talk about the yellow and pink lines for phase 2. As we've already discussed, the yellow line will run between RV Road and Bumbasandra. Yellow line will be 19.15 km long and will have 16 stations. The pink line will run between Kalina Agrahara and Nagwara. It will be 21.25 km long and will have 18 stations. Yellow line is officially referred to as Reach 5. The construction of yellow line has been divided into three packages. Package 1 involves the construction of the 6.42 km section between Boma Sandra and Hosa Road and the construction of 5 stations. Package 2 involves the construction of the 6.38 km section between Hosa Road and Bomanna Haldi and the construction of 6 stations. Package 3 involves the construction of the 6.34 km section between Bomanna Haldi and Rashtriya Vidyalaya Road and the construction of 5 metro stations. While packages 1 and 2 were awarded to the joint venture of Italian Thai Development and ITD Cementation India, Package 3 was awarded to a joint venture of Hindustan Construction Company Limited and URC Constructions Private Limited. Package 3 of the yellow line between RV Road and Bomanna Halli is very interesting as it consists of a double decker road come rail flyover and three interchange metro stations at Rashtriya Vidyalaya Road with the green line at Jayadeva Hospital with the pink line and at Central Silk Board with the blue line. Here are the images of the structure of these three interchange stations which I have explained in my videos on the yellow line, pink line and blue line. If you are interested to know more about these interchange stations, you can watch the videos. It is expected that the 19.15 km yellow line with 16 stations from Rashtriya Vidyalaya Road to Bomba Sandra will be opened in December 2024. Now let us understand the construction of the pink line, officially called Reach 6. The construction of the elevated section of Reach 6 from Kalena Agrahara to Tavre Kere for a length of 7.5 km and the construction of depot entry line to Gothnu depot and 5 stations was initially awarded to Simplex Infrastructures in September 2017. But due to poor progress by the contractor, the contract for Simplex was terminated in February 2021, which were reinvited for the construction of remaining works on the elevated sections and GR Infra Projects was awarded this contract in August 2021. The remaining section of the pink line is underground. Let us now understand its construction. The construction of the 13.92 km underground section from the south ramp to the north ramp was divided into four packages by BMRCL. Bids were invited in June 2017. Package 1 involves the construction of the 3.55 km section between south ramp and National Military School. Package 2 involves the construction of the 2.76 km section between National Military School and Shivaji Nagar. Package 3 involves the construction of the 2.88 km section between Shivaji Nagar and Pottery Town. Package 4 involves the construction of the 4.59 km section between Pottery Town and the North Ramp. However, the bids received for the construction of these sections were far too high. The sum of the lowest bid values for each of the four packages is Rs 8,553.31 crores, whereas BMRCL's total estimate for all the four packages was 5,400. 5047.56 crore. The bids quoted by the companies were nearly 70% higher than BMRCL's estimate, and thus all these tenders were cancelled by BMRCL in March 2018. The second round of tendering resulted in bids that were closer to estimates by BMRCL and were awarded to three firms during the February to November period 2019. Package 1 was awarded to Apcons Infrastructure. Package 2 was awarded to Larsen and Tubro or LNT. Package 3 was also awarded to LNT. Package 4 was awarded to ITT Cementation. Tunneling works on packages 2 and 3 were started in July 2020 by LNT, and tunneling works on packages 1 and 4 were started in 2021 by Afcons and ITT. Let us now understand the tunneling works. 
Afcon's infrastructure limited deployed 3 TBMs named Rudra, Vamika and Varada to construct tunnels on package 1 on between South Ramp and National Military School in the following way Lassen and Dubro or LNT deployed 2 TBMs named Avni and Lavi to construct tunnels on package 2 between National Military School and Shivaji Nagar in the following way For constructing tunnels on package 3 between Shivaji Nagar and the Shadi Mahal TBM retrieval shaft LNT deployed two TBMs named Urja and Vindhya which tunneled as shown on the screen for constructing tunnels on package 4 between Shadi Mahal shaft and Nagwara ITD cementation deployed two TBMs named Tunga and Bhadra which tunneled as shown on the screen currently the two tunnels between Kadu Gundana Halli metro station and Nagwara is under construction All tunneling works are expected to be completed by August 2024. Just like phase 1 of Trama Metro TBMs in phase 2 also face challenges in tunneling. I would like to mention two such instances in phase 2's underground network construction. While TBM Bhadra was tunneling from Venkateshpura metro station to the Shadi Mahal shaft, it faced a peculiar problem. TBM Bhadra started tunneling in June 2021 from the Venkateshpura metro station. Three months later, the ground caved in near Venkateshpura metro station, just 110 meters from the starting point. A BMRC official said that the soil there was varied in nature. It was loose on top and hard below, causing the problem. In November 2021, TBM Bhadra's operations led to the creation of a second sinkhole as well. Not many knew about it as this was in a barricaded area on Tannery Road. Another challenge was faced by TBM Rudra operated in package 1 by Afcon's infrastructure. The machine tunneling between the Dairy Circle and Raksandra metro station encountered an unusual obstacle no machine in India or possibly the world has experienced. A huge pile of garbage with waste dating back to 4 decades. The obstacle first thought to be a huge rock was later revealed to be a garbage pile after the staff analyzed the situation. An entanglement of medical waste, animal fossils, implant waste, confectionery and tobacco covers dating back to the 1980s were found in the dump yard. A detailed investigation by the Afcon's team revealed that an ancient and forgotten quarry existed there. Eventually, the garbage was replaced with concrete mixtures so that the machine can cut through the concrete block. This was a very complicated exercise. However, apart from these incidents, no other major hurdles were faced by any TBMs. As of February 2024, tunneling works on this stretch are 91% complete. The 21.25 km long pink line with 18 stations from Kalena Agrahara to Nagwara is expected to open by the end of 2025. The opening of all these lines will take Nama Metro's network length to around 118 km, making it a huge metro network. But the story doesn't end here. In September 2016, the Karnataka government announced that a new line connecting Silbord with Krishna Rajapura would be included in Phase 2 as Phase 2A of the metro project. The line, 18.2 kilometers long, would be along the eastern half of the outering road and is proposed to have 13 stations. The line's detailed project report was prepared by BMRCL's in-house team and was revealed in November 2016. The state cabinet approved phase 2A in March 2017. This line would have an interchange with the yellow line at Central Sill Port and with the purple line at Krishna Rajapura. Its construction was divided into two packages. Package 1 involved the construction of the 9.86 km section between Central Sill Port and Kodi Bisana Halli and the construction of six stations. This package also involves the construction of the loops and ramps for the road flyover at Silport of length 2.84 km. Package 2 involves the construction of the 9.77 km section between Kodi Bisana Halli and Krishna Rajapura and the construction of seven metro stations. It also involves the construction of the depot entry line to Bayya Panna Halli depot. In the initial round of tendering in February 2018 Infrastructure leasing and financial services or IL and FS emerged as the lowest bidder for both the packages. However, the tenders were quashed due to cash flow problems and bankruptcy proceedings by the firm. In the second round of tendering, the packages were awarded to Afcon's Infrastructure and Shankar Narayana Constructions Private Limited in May 2021, and the construction works on the stretch started in August 2021.
Phase 2B is the airport link metro corridor of Bengaluru. Since Kempegoda International Airport was very far from the city center, a high speed rail link connecting MG Road and Kempegoda International Airport. This was a 35 km line which was to be executed by an independent special purpose vehicle called Bangalore Airport Rail Link Limited. However, this plan was cancelled in October 2013 due to high cost and viability concerns. It was then decided that BMRCL would manage the airport rail project and a regular metro line with fewer halts will be made till the airport. In September 2016, suggestions were invited from the public to choose one of nine possible extension routes of existing or proposed metro lines to the airport. These proposed extension routes had an average length of 30 km and cost estimates ranged between 4,500 and 7,500 crore. The most popular choice was the route from Nagwara to the airport via Kannur and Bagluru. However, since this route passed under the airport's second runway, BIAL forbade this option and it was eliminated. After further planning, the state cabinet in Jan 2019 finally approved the change in alignment of the airport metro line. This new line would be an extension of Phase 2A and begin at Krishna Rajapura. It would go along the northern stretch of Outring Road till Hebbal where it would turn towards NH44 to the airport. Phase 2A from Central Silbot to Kyarpura and Phase 2B from Kyarpura to the airport combined form a 58km long blue line the longest line of Nama Metro, with 30 stations in total, of which 13 stations are in Phase 2A and 17 stations are in Phase 2B. The construction of Phase 2B has been divided into three packages. Package 1 involves the construction of the 11 km section between Kyarpura and Kempapura with 8 stations. Package 2 involves the construction of the 11.68 km section between Kempapura and Baglur Cross with 5 stations. Package 3 involves the construction of the 15.01 km section between Baglur Cross and Kempegoda International Airport with two stations. The airport city and KIAL terminals metro stations will be constructed by BIAL. The Garjuna Construction Company or NCC Limited emerged as the lowest bidder for all three packages in September 2021. Construction work on Phase 2B started in February 2022. The blue line, that is both Phase 2A and Phase 2B, from Central Silbot to Kempegoda International Airport, with a total combined length of 58.19 km and 30 stations is expected to open in September 2026. With the opening of the blue line, the Phase 2 to A to B will entirely be completed and Nama Metro's network length will be 175 km. To summarize, Phase 2 involves the construction of the four extensions of the Phase 1 lines and the construction of two new lines. Phase 2A and 2B involves the construction of the 58 km long blue line. Phase 2 is estimated to cost Rs 26,405 crore. Of the total cost, 30% will be funded by the state government, 20% will be funded by the central government and the remaining 50% will be obtained through senior term loans. The state and the centre are together contributing 15,000 crore rupees for the project. The Asian Development Bank is contributing 250 million US dollar. The French Development Agency is giving 1,600 crore rupees. The Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank is lending 2,250 crore rupees and the European Investment Bank is giving 3,700 crore rupees. Two Indian firms, Biocon and Infosys, are funding the construction of the Hebbagodi and Electronic City metro stations on the Yellow Line respectively. Each firm will contribute 100 crore rupees towards the project. Both Biocon and Infosys have offices located near the stations. For the construction of Phase 2A and 2B of the Blue Line, 14,780 crore rupees are required. For the Blue Line, the central and state governments will together contribute 3,973 crore. Land acquisition costs estimated at 2,762 crore rupees will be funded by the government of Karnataka. The remaining amount of 5,960 crore rupees will be raised through loans. The Asian Development Bank is funding the construction of the Blue Line with 500 million US dollar which is equivalent to 3,643 crore rupees. The Japan International Cooperation Agency is providing 318 million US dollar or 2,317 crore for the projects. 
With this, all financial arrangements have been made for phase 2, 2A and 2B. Now, let us talk about the future of Nama Metro. Several routes of Phase 3 were in planning initially that are highlighted in black color in the map. But since Phase 2A and Phase 2B passed through many of these sections or were in close proximity to various of these sections, the plans for Phase 3 were revised. On 7th March 2020, it was announced that two corridors totaling 44.6 km would be built under Phase 3 as fully elevated lines. These include the 32.1 km long JP Nagar 4th phase to Kempapura Metro Line or the URR West Line and the 12.5 km long Osahalli to Kadba Gere Line on Magdi Road. While Corridor 1 will have 22 stations, Corridor 2 will have 9 stations. Both these corridors will intersect at the Smanna Halli Cross Metro Station. Many interchange stations have been planned on these lines which will promote multimodal integration and usage of public transport. These interchange stations are JP Nagar 4th phase forming an interchange with the pink line, JP Nagar forming an interchange with the green line, Kamakya Junction forming an interchange with the Kamakya Bus Depot, Mysuru Road with the purple line, Sumanna Halli Cross with the Hosa Halli to Kadba Gere line. Pinya with the Green Line, BEL Circle with the Lote Golla Haldi Railway Station, Hebal with the Blue Line and the Sarjapur Hebal Line, and Kempapura with the Blue Line. And Husa Haldi is an interchange metro station with the Purple Line on the Husa Haldi to Kadba Gere Metro Line. On the stretch, there are plans to make two road come metro flyovers, just like the one under construction in the Yellow Line. The first road come metro flyover will be at the Kanakpura Road Junction on Outering Road for a length of 1.37 km and the second flyover will be at the Kamakya Ittamadu Hosakere Halli Junctions on Outering Road for a length of 1.56 km. One point to note is that on the JP Nagar 4th phase to Kempapura line, each train will have 6 coaches. However, on the Hosa Halli to Kadba Gere line, each train will initially have 3 coaches. But as in when demand increases, the train length can be increased to 6 coaches. About 100 acres of land will be required for the construction of Phase 3, of which 25 acres will be needed for wider construction and the remaining 75 acres for the depot of the corridors. This depot will serve both lines of Phase 3 and will be built at Sumanna Halli, where both the lines intersect each other. This will be the second largest depot of Nama Metro, just behind the 100 acre Pinya depot. These corridors are expected to serve 6.7 lakh people daily in the year 2031. And these corridors are estimated to cost Rs 15,600 crore, of which 80 to 85% will be funded by the government of Karnataka, and the remaining cost will be contributed by the centre. The current status of Phase 3 is that the state cabinet has given its approval for Phase 3 in March 2024, and the union government has also approved the project. The geotechnical investigation for Phase 3 has begun in May 2024. This involves a detailed study of soil conditions, terrain characteristics and geological factors along the route, which will help engineers and planners to determine the depth and design of the foundations necessary for metro pillars. It is expected that the Phase 3 corridors from JP Nagar 4th phase to Kempapura uh, with, and Hosa Halli to Kadbagiri line with a total combined length of 44.6 km and with 31 stations is expected to open in 2028-29. With the opening of phase 3, the entire outering road and many of the other major roads of the city like Hosu Road, Banirgatta Road, Kanakpura Road, Mysuru Road, Magdi Road and Tumkuru Road will get metro connectivity. Namma Metro will become a 220 km huge network. On 4th March 2022, during a budget speech by the state government, it was announced that the detailed project report or DPR of a new line between Sarjapura in the southeast and Hebal in the north of the city will be prepared. This line will be 37 km long and have 28 stations. This line is expected to be a game changer as it connects core city areas. The alignment starts with an elevated corridor from Sarjapura and this line is elevated to Jagsandra. 
it goes underground at Kormangla, cuts through the Central Business District or CBD through a tunnel network, and emerges on Bellari Road with two elevated metro stations at Ganganagar and Hebba. This line will have interchanges with other metro lines. It will have interchanges at Iblur with the blue line, at Airy Circle with the pink line, at KR Circle with the operational Sir M. Vishweshwariya station of the purple line, and at Hebbal with the blue and orange lines. This line will play a crucial role in decongesting the Bellari Road, as seven stations will be there on Bellari Road. Several governments have made efforts to decongest this road but have not been successful. However, Metro Rail can majorly help in decongesting the road. This line is estimated to cost 16,543 crore rupees, including land acquisition charges. The high cost is because of higher land prices in the CBD and a long tunnel section, making the prices higher. The current status of the line is that the DPR or detailed project report of the line is ready and will soon be submitted to the state government for approval. Phase 3A from Sarjapura to Hebal of length of 37 km and with 28 stations is expected to open in 2030-31. With the opening of this line, core city areas will get metro access. A comprehensive mobility plan is a report that outlines an overall transport or mobility strategy and specific projects that can be implemented in Bengaluru. Now since this video is about Nama Metro only, I will highlight the CMPs or comprehensive mobility plans suggestions only for Nama Metro. The CMP recommends a 300km metro network in the city by 2031. In this map, the operational network is represented by red, the under construction network by blue, and the proposed Phase 3 and 3A corridors by Green. The Comprehensive Mobility Plan recommends three more lines in the metro system. Firstly, from Katamnallur Gate to Sarjapura to Hebbal, of which the Sarjapura to Hebbal stretch has been taken as Phase 3A. Second, from Dombrur to Whitefield. And third, an inner ring metro, which will be completely underground. Now, ideally, the Karnataka government should focus on these three lines mentioned by the Comprehensive Mobility Plan. But instead of focusing on these lines, proposals are being made to extend the metro to suburban areas. Another problem is that the other lines not mentioned in the CMP might not receive approval from the union government. PMRCL and the government should focus on these lines instead of any other proposals. But what are these other proposals? I'll briefly mention about these proposals before we end the video. BMRCL in February 2024 floated bids for the preparation of a feasibility study report for the extension of metro corridors in two packages. Package 1 for a length of 50 km involved the feasibility study of extensions of metro corridors from Chalagatta to Bidadi, Silk Institute to Harohalli, and from Bomasandra to Atte Bele. Package 2 involves the feasibility study of a 68 km long new line from Kalina Agrahara to Kadugodi Tree Park. Via Jigani, Anekal, Attivele, Sarjapura, and Varthu. In the 2024-25 budget speech, CM Siddharamaya announced that metro will be extended to Tumkuru and Divanahalli. A tender has been floated for the feasibility study of the section between Madhavara and Tumkuru bus stand for a length of 52.14 km, and the tender for the feasibility study of the airport to Divanahalli section of length 15 km will be floated soon. A proposal to extend the Yellow Line Metro from Bombasandra to Hosur for a length of 20.5 km was also demanded by the MP of Krishnagiri. This, if implemented, will become the first interstate metro in South India, of which 11.7 km will be in Karnataka, whereas the remaining 8.8 .8 km will be in Tamil Nadu. Currently, Chennai Metro Rail Limit is, is conducting a feasibility study on this stretch, but this line seems controversial as of now. And this is the end of the video. To summarize, 73.81 km of Nama Metro is operational, 101.5 km is under construction which is to be opened by 2027, another 81.65 km is a part of Phase 3 and 3A which is to be opened by 2031 and there are many many more proposals. If all these lines are made, Nama Metro's network will grow to over 480 km, but that seems rather imaginary as of now. For now, let us just hope that all under construction lines are completed as soon as possible and open for the public. 
and that brings us to the end of this video. This video is the longest and most detailed video on my channel as of now. If you appreciate my work, please like and share this video and subscribe to my channel. Share your valuable thoughts and feedback in the comment section below. Thank you very much.